If you've got passion, Brazil will take your breath away. For children, teenagers, adults, couples, friends and families. From its dazzling beaches to its forest trails and lively cities, Brazil will put all your emotions to the test. And from a sumptuous sunrise to sizzling samba, I'm going to show you all. Lying just below the equator, Brazil is by far the largest country in South America. The state of Bahia, just one small solitary state in Brazil, but incredibly, it's about the same size as France. Get your head around that one. And right now, I'm in the state capital of Salvador, which is roughly halfway between Rio de Janeiro and the northeastern tip of the Atlantic coast. Now, this bustling city is set on the largest bay in Brazil, the Bay of All Saints, which is also home to 56 islands. With more international and charter flights routed directly to Salvador, Brazil is getting easier to access. Otherwise, flights are a short hop via Lisbon. The airport's only 20 kilometers north of the city, and a taxi costs around eight quid. But if you're on a budget, the shuttle bus will set you back one whole pound. Now, Brazil is split into four distinct climate regions. The northeast coastal climate is exceptionally good, with all year round warm weather and a temperature which rarely drops, even in the winter with cloud cover, to less than 25 degrees. However, you don't get the world-famous Brazilian rainforest without a little bit of rain. But storms pass quickly and the temperature is always warm. So all in all, the forecast is Scorchio. Salvador is one of the most atmospheric cities in Brazil, thriving off its unique mix of African, European and South American cultures. Welcome to Salvador. The city was founded in 1549 by the Portuguese, and their cultivation of sugarcane and tobacco helped make Salvador the most important city in the Portuguese empire after Lisbon. Salvador also became a center for the slave trade. The workforces for the plantations were taken from the west coast of Africa, and that's why there's a distinct African influence in the city to the present day. Bem-vindo em Bahia, Axé! Axé! Ai, momento! Oh. Ah. oh, it's the best stop I've had all week. Nearly half a million tourists visit this historic and vibrant city every year, and there's no lack of things to do or places to explore. Someone who knows Salvador inside out is local tour guide Lazario Encarnacio. Tell me a little about the history of Salvador. Salvador was founded in the 1549. It was the first Brazilian capital that became very important. Center of the colony, very near the Old Saints Bay, that was very important. Circulations of ships coming from the Bahia's Bay area, coming from Europe, so it was a very busy area in the colonial times. In Salvador, in the beginning, uh, was just a, a small town that got bigger in the 19th century. How big is it today? How many people live here? About 3 million habitants. It's the third Brazilian largest town. Salvador is very important nowadays because we have the tourism and we have lots of other kinds of business in Salvador. So it's a very, very nice, very big city nowadays. Loads of activity and it's really beautiful as well, isn't it? the charismatic Cobal Pelourinho district in the old city, still looking much as it did during the 18th century, is now the beating heart of Salvador. Are there a lot of special events here? Music festivals, carnivals and shows in general are happening here every day. On hike season, every day it is very busy. OK, well, I'll tell you what, we're outside a music shop right now. I notice you've got what looks like a bow and arrow in your hands. You're not going to shoot me, are you? Uh oh, this is not a bow and arrow. This okay. is a beating bow. Aha, uh -huh. I've seen them in the souvenir shops, local but how do you play them? Local instrument, not difficult to play. Yeah. You play like this. OK, let's get into a bit of a jam session. I'll kick it off and you join in, all right? Good. Here we go. Oh, watch and learn, Ringo Starr.
Thank you. No one's throwing money at us. Why is that? Can't have been that bad, can it? Hello? Where's everyone gone? Never mind. Now I'm off to see some people who make a real song and dance out of their culture. Capa Era is a dazzling non-contact mix of kicks, jumps, spins and artful dodging. The exact origins of this energetic fusion of dancing and fighting is not known. Some say it was born in Brazil, others say it was imported from Angola. But either way, I've come to a Capa Era school to see a demonstration by the students and to show them one or two of my own moves. And I have to say, you better watch out because I'm feeling a little bit tasty. This martial art form really took hold in the Bahia region of Brazil among Africans taken into slavery by Portuguese traders around 400 years ago. All forms of combat training among slaves were strictly forbidden by the Portuguese authorities, so the workers disguised the fighting moves as acrobatics and dance. One theory goes that capoeira was used by young African men to impress the girls. In other words, it's a highly skilled and exotic way of saying, get your coat, love, you pulled. At the end of the day, when in Rome or Salvador. Careful, love, you'll take my eye out. Oh, just look at me go. Time for a sharp exit. Besides, I didn't want to show them up. But the good news is that you can just turn up to watch the classes, totally free of charge. A big part of the culture here is food. Now, what Brazil doesn't have is a single national cuisine, but what it does have instead is loads and loads of distinct regional ones. Some of Brazil's best food is also the cheapest. You mustn't miss Salvador's speciality dish, though, sold on every corner, Baianas. Hola. Hola. Hey. Hello. Uh, what have we got here? What can I have? Can you make me something nice? Okay. Yes, please. Okay. Good, yes. Um, basically, there's loads of these little food stalls all around the city centre, so if you're feeling peckish, it's perfect to pick up a little snack. I've got to be honest, great. I've no idea what I'm buying here, but it does smell good. So it seems like I've got some sort of enormous scotch egg filled with some sort of casserole. But I am quite hungry, so I think it's going to go down a treat. Yes, please. Please, just pile it on. Keep it coming. That's great. Oh, and oh, and a few, <laughs> few whole shrimps as well, just to set it off. Lovely. Storks and all. Quids in. OK. Obrigado. Obrigado. Thank you very much. Mmm, just take a look at that. Oh, baby. I think. Well, I've tried the street food, which was OK, but now I've come to one of the top restaurants in Salvador, Bagasso, serving high-quality local cuisine. And before I eat, I'm going to get stuck in behind the scenes. Here I am, then, in the heart of the kitchen. And, hey, good-looking, what you got cooking here? It looks pretty good to me. It's mukaka, which is a local dish uh, with shrimp and fish and a sauce around it made out of dender oil, which is... Absolutely delicious, and as bestos hot. Gonna need some water after that. Let's take a trip down here. Whoa, look at this. Excuse me. There we go. Octopus. Do you like the way I use the local language there? Excuse me. Oh, wow, a bit of lobster. And uh, over here, check this out. A little bit of hardcore prawn for you. Look at the size of those. They're not shrimping out there, are they? Shrimping out there. 
Well, I've just watched it being cooked, and now I'm going to eat it. Yes, it must be a clean restaurant. Uh, this is a feast, a veritable feast, and I think the theme we're detecting here is seafood. It's seafood city straight from the Atlantic, and to start with, we've got stuffed crab with a little bit of lime. Over here, we've got giant shrimp, giant octopus, and some sort of crab-like creature. Not entirely sure what that is. Ask no questions is my policy. Over here, mukaka. It's a kind of fish in stew. That's the local dish. Uh, no mistaking what that is. Giant lobsters. Over here, we've got cashew. Now, that's the local fruit in its raw form. That's what it looks like once they've weaved their magic. It's got a kind of syrup around it. It looks very tasty, as does this. Believe it or not, that is bananas. Baked bananas in a caramelized sauce. Looks delicious. And to wash it all down with, caparosca, which is a strawberry cocktail. Mmm. Lovely. That's wet my palate. Right now, though, let's get stuck into the lobster. Come on. <laughs> oh, lovely meal. Only thing that put a little bit of a dampener on it is I forgot my wallet. This is Richard Orford doing the washing up for the next three nights here. News at 10. Every other building in Salvador seems to be a cafe or restaurant. Life is lived on the streets and in the bars. You can eat well for a fiver and really well for a tenner. Then settle down and do what the locals do best, chat. Here are five fascinating facts about Brazil that perhaps you didn't know. Number one, it's the largest country in South America. Number two, it's the largest economy in Latin America. Number three, it produces over 90% of the world's gems. Number four, Brazil has been called a crab civilization because just like crabs, the population either lives near to or on the coastline itself. And number five, a lot of Hollywood film stars have cosmetic surgery, but if ever Lassie needed a facelift, he do a lot worse than come to Brazil because it's leading the world in pet plastic surgery. And while we're on the subject of lifts, this tall building here is a whacking great big elevator. It's an important landmark here in Salvador, but it also has a practical purpose because it gets everybody from the lower part of the city to the upper part of the city. Allow me to demonstrate. Lower city. City. As you can see, this place can be enjoyed on so many levels. Yes, it took me ages to think of that one. Join me after the break when I'll be experiencing the language, the food and the nightlife of Brazil. Welcome back to Brazil. Well, after my frenetic start, I'm going to chill out now. I'm going to enjoy some of the sights and sounds the place has to offer, including this indoor market where you can buy everything from sarongs, eat your heart out, David Beckham, to musical instruments. Have a look at that. Oh, yes. And over here, we've got some necklaces. And down here, we've got ourselves a man carved out of wood. I've been looking for one of these for absolutely ages. This is going to go really nicely next to my wicker donkey and my singing trout in my bathroom. I'll take it. Why the long face? Good news, everyone. I've got the horn. The Mercado Modelo's open from 10 till 6 every day, and don't be scared to haggle. Ah, nice. Now, if you're out and about in Brazil, you'll notice that it's really relaxed. The people are warm and friendly, and you feel your stresses and strains beginning to melt away immediately. Now, if you're in the marketplace or perhaps buying yourself a beer, you're going to be dealing with the local currency, which we call reals, but the locals call AIs. Now, what you have here on the back of each one is an animal. So we've got a jaguar on the back of the 50, a monkey on the back of the 20, a parrot on the back of the 10. But do be aware, if you're a foreigner and you're buying big things over here, such as property, you're going to be dealing with the good old American dollar. 
I'm starting off with small-scale stuff, a purchase from one of the many coconut stalls around the city. Ah, one, one of those for me with a straw. Yeah, we'll, we'll... It's a cheap, fast and traditional way to quench your thirst. Obrigado. Nice. Yes, I don't think the local council has quite thought this one through, have they? Anyway, I should be picking up an apple for teacher because I'm heading back to school. Of course, if you're going to fully immerse yourself into Brazilian life, you're going to have to make a bit of an effort with the official language. So, I've come to Igioma, which is one of the Portuguese language schools in Salvador, to try and expand my vocabulary beyond hola, obrigado, and I'm so sorry, I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. I'm English. Inga Calvario lives in Salvador, and she's worked at a language school for the last three years. Hello. Inga, how difficult is Portuguese as a language to master? Many people say that it's the most complex um, of the Roman languages, but um, many people who know already some um, Spanish or Italian, French, um, already have a good basis to, to learn Portuguese language in a very fast way. Yeah, I don't have a good basis in that case. <laughs> and what about your language school? I mean, how many different nationalities come here? We have students from all over the world. We don't want to focus in one special country as we like the exchange between the different languages, countries, and it enforces as well our students to start speaking Portuguese with each other yeah. as soon as possible. So that everyone can sort of integrate because they're just constantly speaking Portuguese in the lesson and the teacher speaks Portuguese as well. You will see that it, that it works as we work a lot with images. Our teachers are used to, uh, to teach in Portuguese because you have to uh, reach that your mind switches completely yeah. to Portuguese. So and you if... start thinking in Portuguese. Exactly, is that exactly. Yeah. And dreaming. And dream. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, that sounds pretty advanced. Okay, let's say I move here tomorrow. Obviously, I'm going to need to know the language. How long is it going to take me to get a pretty good grip of it? Generally, it depends on, on each person. But um, if you take, for example, every day lessons from Monday to Friday, each day three hours of lessons, you can count with about two to three months lessons um, until having a good basis. The rest is just practice. Inga, can you give me a Portuguese phrase so that I can really impress the tutor and be teacher's pet? Bom dia, um, meu nome é Richard. Bom dia, meu nome, meu nome, meu nome é Richard. É Richard. Bonjour. So that's a uh, good day. My name is Richard. Yeah. Lesson one in the back. Okay. Agora mais coisas para falarem. Portuguese is spoken by nearly 190 million people worldwide, and 89% of them live in Brazil. It's about to become obvious, though, that I'm in the 11% that don't. Eu sou Richard. <laughs> the language spread worldwide through early Portuguese explorers sailing the world on the hunt for new territory. Salada. Está bem? Salada. Salada de alface. Ah, aqui temos feijão com arroz, não? Temos feijão com arroz aqui. Wakey, wakey, Orford, pay attention. A tomata? Oh, all tomato. All tomato. All tomato, yeah. I was just testing you. <laughs> easy. This is easy. <laughs> yes, of course it is. Well, school's out and about time too, and I'm going to let my hair down with a night on the town. OK, check this out. Real live caparea in the streets of Brazil. Have a look at this. Well, for my money, they're more fun than those blooming living statues you see everywhere else. And you can't fully appreciate a balmy Brazilian evening until you're in the thick of one. If you want to watch street demonstrations like these, and certainly if you take photographs, expect to pay them a few quid for the privilege. But with acrobatics like this on show, it's worth every penny. Now, I've been told that sometimes these guys can get a bit carried away and actual fights break out. So in that case, I better stick to my Michael Flatley impression instead. 
Oia! Look at that, everyone! Amazing! Thank you. See, I taught them everything they know. Well, with ecstatic applause still ringing in my ears, I headed off to the Sola da Uniao restaurant where they put on a different kind of show. Music and rhythm is in the blood of the Brazilian, so I've come here to sample Brazilian dance at its finest, including the samba. Check it out, ladies. Oh, yeah. Before the sexy samba show, we're treated to some flamboyant traditional dance. Side your head. I said, oops, upside your head. I said, oops, upside your head. I said, oops, upside your head. Apparently, this is Brazilian net fishing pulling. It's all the rage in the clubs right now. What is it about me? Have I got a huge sign above my head saying, please pull me onto the dance floor? Oh, yes, step aside, John Travolta. Orford's in the house. All right, steady on, mate. You're going to injure yourself there. Yeah. I think she was impressed. Or was that depressed? and welcome rain to cool me off. Next stop, the Okra Vigno Bar. Oh, there's nothing like a tropical storm to get you in the mood for a beer. It really doesn't take long to make new best friends in Brazil. So, Fernando, why have you brought me to this particular bar? Well, that's easy, because it's one of the best places where you can see the real nightlife and where a lot of people go and interact with each other. Now, around right here, we are just right into the old historical city, and that's where the place where local people go for some drinks. And is there a good nightlife around here? Actually, it's very lively. There are many things going on, you know, every single day, you know, especially weekends, like, Friday, Saturday, or even Sunday. Is it a big part of the culture here? I mean, every Friday and Saturday night, does every young person go out? Exactly, all year round. And basically, sometimes it's not only on Friday and Saturday, on also on Tuesdays. We got the Tuesday night party here. Right, why stick at Friday and Saturday? Let's have Tuesdays as well, I like that. OK, well, I'm enjoying this night out. I'm enjoying the beer, but I have to say, I think I'd prefer it if I had a cocktail. Is that something you can sort out for me? I think so. I think I can teach you how to, you know, prepare a lot of drinking. Teach me how to make a cocktail. Tom Cruise, eat your heart out. Come on. Whoa, this lot seems to know their drink. Hope they're stirred and I'm not shaken. All right, Richard. Now I'm going to teach you how to prepare our caipirinha. That's our national drink. Excellent. And then, yeah, once you got there, you can even dance the samba. I hear it's rocket fuel. It's really strong. Definitely. All right. All right. Let's so get to it. So the first thing that you have to do is place some lemon inside of... Lime? Into lime, there, yes. Exactly. Lime okay. inside of here. Right after that, you place some sugar. A couple of uh, tablespoons. Yeah, wonderful. Right after that, you have to smash the lemon with the sugar, just mixed, just like... Well, I'm taking notes here, because okay. it might prove invaluable later. When does the alcohol go in? Right That's the important now. thing. Oh, yeah. good, good. <laughs> just place a sugar is... cane spirit. Sugar cane spirit. Yeah, just place inside of here. Yeah, a generous okay. amount. Yeah, let me see, you know, whenever you can drink, I would say. A little bit more. OK, no. <laughs> That's fine, That's fine. fine. OK, all right. Yeah. Right after that, ice. Okay, no, just a couple, nothing too okay. fancy. <laughs> and then we just, you know, close. Oh, no, we're talking classic yeah. cocktail-making mm -hmm. moment here. Exactly, that's Go for it, my son. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shaky, shaky. And OK. It's boring. Yeah. Oh. It looks good. I think so, I hope he so. He shoots, he scores. <laughs> and then finally... Final thing. The little touch. It's true. Yeah. OK, mate, stand aside. Here we go. Okay, we put the lime in, all right? Exactly. We put the two 
spoonfuls of sugar. OK, we get the old pestle. We give it a bit of this, all right? Now, we take this, we pour a heck of a lot of it in. There we go, we keep it coming. Okay. All right, in fact, we give it the long pour. Yeah, they love a bit of that. Ladies love a bit of that. All right, OK, now we're talking... Oh, the ice, yeah, almost forgot that. Well done, you spotted my deliberate mistake. Put the lid on the top. Give it this. Here we go, ladies. Voila! Hola! Glad I screwed the lid on tight. Hey, it's gone, then pour it in. And we're there, and then finally, the straw on top. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you, thank you. And there we go, Fernando. Cheers. Mm. I think it's time for a sharp exit. <laughs> Well, I've had an excellent night here, but join me after the break because I'll be turning my attention to property. Welcome back to the city of Salvador in Brazil. Now, did you know I've got a lovely pair of coconuts? There they are. And it's Coconut Coast that I'm heading up to now to check out some of the property developments and investment opportunities on offer. Mmm, tasty. Coconut Coast lies north of Salvador and it's 200 kilometers of sheer beauty. It's dotted with little fishing villages where the local way of life hasn't changed much over the years. Serious investors are beginning to recognise the huge potential that this region has to offer. And with property prices being so affordable, it's easy to acquire a piece of paradise without paying Caribbean prices. I met up with Gustavo Gill, an expert in developments in the region. He's showing me an exclusive gated community only 40 kilometres from the international airport. It's surrounded by beautiful lakes and there are even plans for a heliport. Cool. It's a really impressive building, and the amount of space, I mean, just in here in the main living room, this is incredible. Yeah, everything here is built spacious. It's for your comfort, for you to feel relaxed when you're in your home. So this, is not, this isn't a particularly nice place here. This is just what it is everywhere. It's nothing out of the ordinary. You, you'll get this everywhere you go. It's incredible. It's immaculately clean as well, isn't it? And uh, what's this room in here? It's a small dining room. Yeah, with a little Lazy Susan as well, nice. Place your bets, everybody. Not so much a lazy Susan, it's a speedy Susan. And uh, nice views as well. Beautiful pool. Yeah. You have the view of the, of the lake on the other side. And this is perfect with the weather, isn't it? You've got this outside area, you can have your own party. Look at this. It's a barbecue. Yeah, incredible, isn't it? Yes, you could have friends over. Yeah. A nice lunch. And yeah, whoa, look at this. This is the clincher. Check out the pool. I could just dive into that right now. That's not all. You have a lovely waterfall, private owned waterfall in your own pool. La dee da. Let's go and have a look at the kitchen. Well, as you can see, not such a very small kitchen. No, it's rather on the large size, isn't it? Yep. You have everything you need. It's all top quality. You can see you have granite countertops, mm -hmm. have excellent storage areas. Yeah. Do you have the white goods come with it as well? Yes, you have your fridge, you have an oven on this side. Should we have a look upstairs? Yeah, let's go have a look upstairs. All in all, the property has four bedrooms, one on the ground floor and three upstairs. And are all the bedrooms en suite? Yes, they certainly are. The one we're walking into right now is a master bedroom. Mm -hmm. It's beautifully presented. And all the bedrooms have access to the balcony here. OK. It's a lovely view. It certainly is. So, Gus, you've got four bedrooms, five bathrooms, a massive living room, a huge kitchen with all the mod cons, a swimming pool, a cuddly toy, a partridge in a pear tree. How much is this going to cost you? Well, on average, a home like this off plan would go for about £250,000. But you could buy property in this development here, starting up at £120,000. So, if I was to spend the summer money on my own Brazilian hideaway, and at the end of the day, why wouldn't I? What would it be like to actually live here? I caught up with Dylan Hope, who moved to Brazil six years ago. Well, Dylan, I can tell straight away from your accent, you're not a local boy, are you? No, I'm from New Zealand. My wife is Brazilian. Uh, we met in London and we've been here since year 2000, but we love the place. What is it you like about it? 
the, the kind of tropical lifestyle, really welcoming people. It's a, it's a nice place to live, um, sort of all year round, summer. But you have a bit more of a, a beach culture here. It's yeah. nice when you get into the culture, you learn a bit of the language and things. It's, it's a nice place to live. So you've got a place here, but then you actually become a bit of a property investor, haven't you? Yeah, when we, when we first arrived, my wife had the idea to, to build some places. We, we built four houses. We bought an empty lot on the beach and went in with some, some partners. We still have the four houses. We're renting them out. It's, uh, it's been really good. Is it easy to buy a place over here? Yeah, I was, I was kind of pleasantly surprised when I came here how easy it was for foreigners to buy property. Has it been lucrative? Yeah, we've been really happy. Um, we're getting about sort of 12 to 15 per cent on the rental annually. And uh, if we sold them now, they'd be worth about, about double what they were five years ago when we built them. And is it easy to fill the place rental-wise? Yeah, it's really easy. I mean, they're not top end of the market. Um, they're, we're renting them to Brazilians. Um, I think the big market that's taking off now seems to be the, the tourist market. Um, you know, you, you see a lot of development from overseas now. Yeah. Um, our ones are a more Brazilian type of type of market, but yeah, we're filling them really easily. You live the lifestyle of an international pop star, it has to be said. I wish. <laughs> yes, I wish too. I met up again with Gustavo Gill. He's found another development, still under construction, but looking good. So this is Paraíso do Mar, which means uh, paradise by the sea. You have beautiful homes, and best thing about it is you're right on the beach. So what are the amenities like around here? Well, you have a private clubhouse being built on the other side. Have tennis courts, you have anything to, to suffice all your needs while you're in here. What about prices? How much is a place like this going to set me back? It's probably take you back about 275,000 pounds off plan. Uh, uh, you could buy property here starting up at 175 to 200,000 pounds. Well, what about this particular location? What's the selling point about here? Huh. The great thing about this is you're only 20 minutes away from the airport. You're 50 to 60 meters away from the beach. And it's even got its own outside bar. You're just living the lifestyle. I am, although I'm living the lifestyle without a drink. Have you got anything? No, that's chance? no problem. Ah, excellent. Cheers. I'll drink to that. That's if I can get the can open. The Parisio de Mar development lies in a protected area that's popular with visitors and locals alike. Tourism here is sustainable. Ecotourism now accounts for 5% of the world tourism market, and it's growing every year. In fact, most of the resorts and developments in this region are eco-sensitive, with tree replanting schemes, a ban on motorised boats and recycling centres. And leading the way is this place, the village of Pride de Fort. Just 10 years ago, Praia de Fort was a fishing village, but now its 2,000 residents earn a living from eco-tourism, living side by side, tourism, conservation and traditional Brazilian life. How great is that? Now this is what you expect to see in Brazil. Real top class silky skills with the ball on the beach. Make way lads, Pelé's coming. <laughs> One nil. One nil. Hey, hey. <laughs> Cos I've got shoes on, it's a problem, this, you know. Right, you'll be gone. Oh. 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 There's supposed to be somebody just there. Right, you'll be gone. Crashed him, absolutely crashed him. Interesting fact, shortly after this match, I became the centre of an intense bidding war between Accrington Stanley Reserves and Doncaster Bell's Ladies' Eleven. Reserves. Now, another Premier League attraction in Praia de Fort is the Tamar Turtle Reserve, which is just one of the many important conservation projects in northeast Brazil. Tell me about the Tamar project, Luciana. OK, so the Tamar project is the Brazilian National Conservation uh, for Sea Turtles, program for sea turtles. And it started in 1980, mm -hmm. and it's working on the conservation of citrus in Brazil for the past 26 years. And this is part of a general drive in Brazil towards ecotourism? By the last two decades, maybe. Uh, the, the message of ecotourism has been spreading a lot in Brazil. And Praia de Forte, especially, is an area where you, know, you have whales coming here, you have slots, you have blue macaws, uh, and you have the turtles. And what are we in front of here, then? Well, here uh, is where we keep the nests that had to be transferred because they would be in danger on the beach. Right. But actually, most nests today stay on the beach. When would you expect these to start opening, then? 
Well, it usually takes about 50 days for the babies to hatch, and we are already having some that start hatching already, so maybe tomorrow or even today. As soon as they hatch, our crew takes them at night to the ocean. Those that haven't been able to hatch by themselves, we're gonna give them a little hand and take them with the tourists at the end of the day to set them free on the beach right there. Wow, it must so be an amazing, amazing feeling, yeah. yeah it is. Wow, look at the size of that big boy over there. These guys are huge. Yes, these are actually sub-adults. They still are gonna grow a little more. <laughs> and depending on the fish, they'll grow twice as this size, like that one, for example. Is that life-size? That is a life-size leatherback turtle. That's incredible. How old are these guys? They're about 20 years old. And Same have... age as me. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> and they will live up to about 100. 100. Cool. Can I feed one? Yeah, sure. All right. Gloves on? This is a first for me. All right, is this is quite important to put the gloves on, yeah? <laughs> That's brilliant. Do they eat a lot? They eat a lot. A whole bucket. The ho okay. This whole bucket? Yeah. Wow. How often do you have to feed them? Uh, we feed them every day. Wow, it's been incredible. This is, a, this is a real first for me. Thank you very much indeed, Luciano. I can see how important this place really is now. Thanks for this. Thank you very much. These turtles are either recovering from injury or unlikely to survive back in the wild. And to see them costs just one pound per person, which makes for a great value day out. Back in Salvador, I met up with expat Cristina Ida Madureira to find out what it's like to live here day to day. So, Christine, what brings you to Brazil? Well, I came to teach English in Goiânia yeah. um, 10 years ago. It's near Brasilia. And then I moved to another city, and then by fluke, I ended up here. So, and I've been here 10 years. So. And you're quite settled now, because you've got a husband and a little girl. Yeah, I've got a three-year-old who's 100% Brazilian and doesn't want to speak English. Really? I, I speak to her in English, and she replies in Portuguese. So. Fantastic. And what about day-to-day -day life? Do you find it any different from England? Is it easy? Well, to me, it's the same as living in any other country. We've got supermarkets, cinema, shopping centre. I don't have to wash my clothes at the river, so... <laughs> OK, well, we're going to check out the cost of living here. You brought me to a local supermarket, so I'm just going to grab myself a trolley. OK. And off we... Oh, I've got one with wonky wheels. I can't <laughs> believe it. You travel halfway around the world and you still can't get away from the... Do you want the healthy brown bread? Oh, okay, yeah, go on in. Healthy brown bread. Very nice. And wine's just here. Uh, OK, very nice. Cheeky little vintage, that one. I'm going. The butter, or is that? uh, that's butter. That's the butter. butter. Sugar. Oh, hey. Eggs. And I'm not going to ask what that is. <laughs> In fact, what are these? Are these quail's eggs? Quail's eggs. They're mm -hmm. enough for Okay, I'll take three. Following <laughs> <laughs> the lead. Bit of bog roll. Let's go for, uh, let's go for some peach. I think that's really nice. Um, OK, off to the checkout. Hola. OK, here we go. Then we've got our very basic food there, bread. And that's followed by a little bit of milk. Long life, ladies and gentlemen. Then we have ourselves a typical uh, slab of butter there, followed by a fairly hefty wedge of cheese. Uh, then we've got sugar to put in our Brazilian coffee, because obviously it's quite popular around here, coffee. And uh, after that, we've got our standard six eggs. Uh, then we've got cuddly toy, cuddly toy, uh, a big bottle of plonk there, which is very, very nice to wash it all down with. And then probably be needing this at the end as well, a uh, typical bog roll. And the whole lot, quanto é, comes to 2708 hay eyes, which is roughly seven quid. Not bad. Obrigado. Seven pounds. Pretty good compared to the same stuff back home, which cost in total £12.49. OK, can we help you with that? Yeah, no, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> Still to come, I'll be getting some helpful advice on buying a property right here in Brazil. See you after the break. Welcome back. COP 
a load of that. That is the State Museum of Bahia. Now, the northeast of Brazil is a particularly popular place to invest in property. And it doesn't matter whether you're splashing out on a place as big as that or an itsy witsy teeny weeny little place. Either way, the market is currently experiencing significant growth. Having seen some of the coastal developments on offer, I'm headed to Santo Antonio, the historical district of Salvador. People from all over the world visit this city. Some are just simply on their travels, a quick stopover for a few days. But right now, I'm going to meet Charles Butler, and his stopover has lasted nearly 20 years. So, Charles, where are you originally from? From London. Uh, I came here first time 20 years ago. First time I've ever been out of Europe. Spent four months in Rio. Loved it. I spent the next few years visiting other countries, but uh, always wanted to come back to Brazil. Got on a plane to Salvador, because it's the cheapest flight. Got off here and just never made it any further. So why didn't you make it any further? You obviously fell in love with the place. The Salvador's got a lot of energy, and it's a very easy place to get to know. It's small enough that uh, in a few days you can sort of feel like you know the place, mm. you know, which is a nice feeling. Eight years ago, I settled with uh, the lady who's now my wife. I have two children, one a boy is seven, and a little girl is almost five. How do you find day-to-day -day living here compared to England? I think it's, uh, it's much more of an outdoor place. Uh, it's a simpler lifestyle. As a place to visit, I don't think you can beat it. It's very culturally uncomplicated. Brazilians like living. On their day off, they like to go to the beach, they like to drink, listen to good music, dance. Have a good time. Charles has combined property investment with business, taking on a huge renovation project, a colonial-style property that he's turning into a stunning B&B. Well, Charles, your house earlier was a, a wonderful property and you'd renovated it yourself, hadn't you? Yes, it was a, my first project. I bought it in a very run-down state and I actually ran the job. But it was mainly rewiring, replumbing, cleaning the place up. Uh, it took about a year to do. And then you moved on to your second project, this guest house that we're sitting in now, which was much more ambitious. I bought it as a complete ruin. So the thing is completely rebuilt from the foundations upwards. Uh, it was an incredible learning experience, took two years, and actually quite enjoyable. I could do another one, definitely. So have you kept any of the original features? Well, seeing there wasn't actually anything here when we started, what we did was we took all the the style, the doors, the ceiling heights from the original property using the windows as the size. Other than that, I would imagine uh, originally they wouldn't have stone floors, so it's something I threw in. Yeah. And obviously the, the metal railings for all the fish. How easy was it to do all this building work? I mean, what about building regulations, for example? The bureaucracy is interesting here. It's, it's, it's a different, definitely a different approach. Actual building regulations they're pretty relaxed. All you have to make sure is that the outside is kept original. The inside, you can do what you want. And that side of things, yeah, very easy. So has all this renovation of your house and your guest house proved quite lucrative? Absolutely. Uh, both the properties have gone up in value quite considerably. I'm actually thinking of selling my house because I've seen another ruin, which is even bigger. And I want to do the whole thing again. So property has gone up a lot in the last few years. Yeah, there's a lot of interest in Brazil, especially the northeast. A characterful renovation can have amazing end results, but don't forget how much hard work you have to put in in the first place. And as with any investment, always talk to a local lawyer. He'll know things nobody else does. Pedro, from a legal perspective, how easy is it for foreigners to buy property in Brazil? If you're following the right steps, it's not that difficult to buy a property here in Brazil. So you shall look for strong and well-structured companies and avoid the smaller and not very recommended companies. If you take these, these steps, I think you're not going to have any problem buying a property here in Brazil. How do you go about finding a good, reputable, independent lawyer? Here in Brazil, you can ask for recommendations on the Bar Association here in Brazil. You can also have, uh, can consult international magazines to see uh, the Brazilian law firms, the top Brazilian law firms, and try to figure out how good the lawyer is. 
So obviously you've got the cost of the property and the commission you're paying to the estate agents, but what other additional costs are you facing? You have the legal fees of the lawyers. It goes around one up to 3%. You also have the notary costs and then you have transmission taxes. I think it's the equivalent of stamp duties. And is it quite a lucrative business? This moment here in the northeast of Brazil, especially here in Bahia, is a very good moment to invest. First of all, for the last three years, or maybe five years, the price almost tripled. So you can guarantee a very good return on your investment. Sound advice. Now, finding a good property consultant is invaluable too. Daniel Daly owns some typical Salvador apartments. OK, Daniel, so you're a bit of a property expert, you're an estate agent, but you're also Irish, so what are you doing in Brazil? Well, I, I came here many years ago for a holiday, uh, just for three weeks, and fell in love with the place and decided that I wanted to come back. So I came back and, at the time, didn't speak any Portuguese, so I started teaching English and uh, just with the t passing of time, I uh, just it grew to like the place more and more and decided to stay. So you're going to show us around a couple of properties today. Where have you brought us to first? This first one here is a sort of a typical uh, apartment or property, uh, what I would refer to as sort of a high-end uh, apartment. It's three to four bedrooms, which yeah. uh, I'll show you now in a minute. It's in a neighbourhood called Baja, which is one of the most sought-after neighbourhoods. A lot of foreigners that uh, come here to live are uh, just purely buy and use their properties once, twice or three times a year. This is the neighbourhood that they buy in. Uh, so, should we have a little look around there? Yeah, let me show you around. OK. Right, what have we got then? So, here's the living room area. Yeah. Uh, half the living room area. This is what I suppose we could call, refer to as the lounge. Yeah. And then over here, then in the other half, we have the dining area, right. which leads out, out onto the veranda, yeah. which is very nice to hang out in the evenings. Okay, and over here, then, we have the TV and the sound system, and again, just a, another area to, to relax. That's where you'd find me. So through here, we have the bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Two bedrooms here on the left. There's a bathroom there on the right. Yeah. And now this is the master bedroom, which has its own bathroom. Wow, this is incredible, isn't it? It's massive. And then off the, the bedroom, we have another private veranda. Oh, very nice. Oh, and a nifty view at the Atlantic. Very swish indeed. It's a nice view, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. This is the, the Baja Lighthouse here over our shoulder, uh, and this is where Carnival starts. Every, every year the, for the five days before Lent, uh, as in the other countries, when Carnival happens. And what kind of thing can you expect to see here, then, during the Carnival week? Carnival is pretty wild. It's like Notting Hill multiplied by 50. So you, at any point in time, during the six days, you could have up to a million people on the street partying. So this is a good spot to be elevated away from the crowd. This is like your private viewing area, um, so that, that makes a, a huge demand for these apartments during Carnival. OK, so you've got three bedrooms, three bathrooms, a big living area, a huge kitchen, maids' quarters, all the amenities thrown in. How much is this going to set me back to buy? This property would be worth in sterling approximately £100,000. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. And what about the rental income? Normal rental, let's say, if renting it by the week, uh, would cost you approximately for £500. But in Carnival, uh, that's a special week. But you'd rent it out for approximately £2,500. OK, so we've seen this place, and very nice of this too. I mean, it's so big, isn't it? For yeah. £100,000. Yeah. Where else are you going to take us? Well, I want to take you out now to another neighbourhood, which is called Rio Vermelho, which is known as the Bohemian neighbourhood. And uh, there's a very, very nice apartment out there, a different style that I'd like to show you. All right, let's go. A short drive later, and we arrived at one of the trendiest areas in Salvador. Oh, I'm loving the saloon doors here. It's just yeah. like the OK Corral, isn't it? Yeah, this um, is the kitchen, as you can see. It's a real open plan effect in this place, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, OK, so a modern kitchen. And then over here we have the two bedrooms. Yeah, all nice size, yeah. Nice. And they're both en suite. Yeah. And then through here, then we have the TV lounge area. Yeah. Which doubles up as a bedroom. Using these blinds, yeah? Yeah. For privacy? Yeah. Very nice. And then through here, then the main living room section. OK, so who would buy a place like this? Um, I would imagine who, who would buy a place like this would be uh, probably foreigners, although on this particular street it's really sought after by people from Salvador because it's a dead end, a dead end so there's no traffic. 
Right, and what about prices for this one? This apartment would be in the region of £70,000. So it's cheaper than the last place? Yeah. And um, rental income? Rental income wouldn't be as lucrative as in the other apartment because the other apartment, uh, as you remember, with the views and the location in Baja with Carnival. But it, this is highly rentable as well because it's such a nice apartment. The apartment here per week would be approximately 150, 170 pounds. And do you think the property market looks good at the moment in this area? Yes, the property market is very stable. Uh, the economy is stable, the currency is stable. Obviously, these are very important factors. But yeah, the properties in this part of the country are going up between 10 and 20% a year. And if you're thinking of investing in Brazilian property, here are some top tips for you. Number one, always do your research. Number two, come out on a little visit and see it for yourself. Number three, make sure you're across all of the building's rules and regulations. And number four, get yourself a very good independent lawyer. <laughs> Brazil has an incredibly positive vibe and everybody's excited about its potential. La, la, great lyrics. La, 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 la. It's a uh, very sexy city. It's got a good feel-good factor, whether visiting here or if you want to come and live here. The future in Brazil will, will be wonderful, I'm sure. Living in Brazil is fantastic. It's a really good place to bring up your family. I can notice that uh, more and more people are trusting in Brazil's economy. And there are coming so many people from all over the world to settle down here. I think there is a very good perspective, a very positive perspective for the real estate business here in, in Bahia for the next 20 years at least. It's also modernizing very quickly. It's becoming a more important city within Brazil. And there's a lot of money flowing in. It's becoming much wealthier than it was. Right now, it's at the beginning of its growth curve. So whoever comes into the market now gets to reap the rewards for years to come. I think it's got a great future. I, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I tell you what, I've been absolutely blown away by this part of Brazil. It's looking to the future, but it's still got one eye on the past. History and culture is a vibrant part of everyday life here. The properties are affordable and a good investment on the growing rental market. And the place is infectious. Once you come here, you won't want to leave. For more information, call 0800 310 1444 from the UK, 1 800 63 50 31 from Ireland, or visit the website www.overseasproperty.tv.com. See you next time.